I'm Paul Bennett here in Millbridge, Maine. We're on the Bowl Coast, right near the U.S. Canadian border. And I'm back again talking about my new sailboat. I showed you a design last week, a preliminary design, 26 feet in length. The whole idea being it could be a documented vessel. As I searched for the amount of lead that I need for the outside ballast keel, I discovered that prices on lead have really shot up. So I'm, I'm encountering a lot of sticker shock. Prices on everything are just through the roof. So just so much higher than they used to be when I was in the marine business. The lead cost, all scrap lead, what people want for it, and the quantity I would have to buy is really high. It's uh, you know much higher than I want to spend or that I have to spend. I started thinking uh, I'll design a smaller boat. And I'm going to show you the lines drawing. I completed that this week. It's still a heavy displacement, long keel, monohull. It too requires quite a bit of lead, not as much as the 26 footer, but after a few rough calculations, I still think it's going to be a little too high. So I said, well, 22 feet. I want to do some cruising, short term liveaboard. Every now and then a little offshore jaunt. Do I want to go much smaller than 22 feet? Yeah, that's pretty small you know, for that type of work. The thought occurred to me that I could go with a, a sailing dory, similar to the St. Pierre dory. The late John Gardner was fond of them and had a lot of good things to say about them. And of course we all know that uh, dories uh, that were used off the Grand Banks for fishing, they hold a lot of weight, they're good sea boats, uh, they, they do a good job. The St. Pierre dory was a larger version of those type of fishing dories. It was just decked over, had a sail rig. Jay Benford, who's a naval architect, I think he's still down around St. Michael's, Maryland, has successfully designed a lot of sailing dories of a variety of sizes, and many of them have circumnavigated across major oceans. They do very well. And it's essentially, it's a flat bottom boat, but he adds uh, fin keels to them, in some cases, uh, I think he designed a 30-footer with a long keel. And then he has a smaller one, a 26-footer with, uh, I think, twin keels. I think Andy Hall's book, I forget the title of it, I think it's uh, Voyaging on a, on a Budget or you know, Low Income or something. I, I read her book years ago. She and I guess her husband had a 34-foot sailing dory designed by Jay Benford. They've sailed all around the world. And I think it was uh, catch rigged or uh, Chinese junk rigged or something. They were successful. So I think what I might do is I'm going to start working on some sketches for a sailing dory. And now I could get back up to 26 feet if I wanted to because a sailing dory is a relatively simple hull. I still need a lot of ballast, but instead of going with lead, as much as I hate to do it, I might have an external ballast keel made out of concrete and scrap steel. With the longer boat, I would have to make the keel a little bit wider in order to get enough volume to get sufficient weight. Everything's a compromise in boat design. And if you're not willing to compromise, you'll never get to sea. You'll never have your boat built. I'm back to the drawing board. I want to work on another version. I'm going to post a copy of a uh, drawing I did the 22-foot displacement hull. Oh, I'll put it on the screen. So you can see what I had. I'm going to take that sailing dory approach and see what I come up with. I think that way there I won't be spending as much money. And while I will be spending more money on plywood, it's very easy, simple construction. And the outlay of plywood is less than what it would cost me to buy the lead to do the other version. This is where I'm, I'm trading things off here. And I'm hoping that this time, well, third time's a charm is what they say. I've come up with the latest concept and very shortly I'll put up a picture of the drawing, the lines drawing that I came up with. Apologize for the background noise. Uh, it's pouring rain and we have a steel roof here in the shop and it's making a racket. So I hope you can hear me in this video. Anyway, uh, I came up with a 28 foot long, that's the length on deck, sailing dory 
Heavily influenced by John Gardner and the St. Pierre Dories and also some of the sailing dory designs by Jay Benford. So I came up with a drawing that reflects my personal needs. 28 feet, it's over 26. I should be able to document the vessel with the Coast Guard. It has plenty of room in it, uh, enough for me. With a simple sloop rig, I can make it such that I can uh, single hand the vessel without any crew. Even at my age, I should be able to handle it. As far as the sloop rig, will it be a high aspect ratio or a low aspect ratio? It may be somewhere in between. Again, it's going to be simple. I want to be able to handle the canvas uh, all by myself, even in rough conditions. I really can't afford to put on a roll of furling rig for the jib. I'm going to be handling the canvas uh, the old-fashioned way, putting hanks on the force day. I have to be able to handle it so I don't want too much canvas. I will have a few different size sails, different conditions. Although it's a dory, essentially a dory, it does have a long keel. Uh, outside ballast will be a combination of concrete and scrap steel. And I have quite a bit of the scrap steel. I only have to buy the concrete. That won't be that terribly expensive. So I will be purchasing plywood, uh, which I will use for the outer skin. I'm excited about this one. I think this is the one I'm going to choose. So you'll see the concept drawing, but I'm already starting to work on more definitive uh, drawings, working up some of the calculations I need to make. Very shortly I'll have the beginning of some construction drawings completed. So now I have a plan. I'm going to start looking at where I'm going to start building the boat. Say the what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?